Hey everyone, Kai Hatsu here. You know, games don't need to be super realistic or gritty to look nice, and Mario games are a good example of this. They're some of the best looking games out there. And to me, the best looking ones are the Super Nintendo remakes of Mario 1 and 2, Yoshi's Island, which I've already done a video on, and Super Mario World. It's a bright cartoony style, sure, but there's definitely something else going on below all of this bright colourful stuff, and you may be a little surprised to find out what it is. Super Mario World's art style, especially the level backgrounds, are derived from an old style of Japanese art called Yamato-e. Yamato -e, translated as classical Japanese paintings, is a style that became fully developed around the late Heian period, considered to be Japan's golden age for culture and architectural influence. This painting style is based on earlier paintings from the Tang Dynasty, as China had a strong influence on Japanese and Korean culture for a long time, up until fairly recently historically speaking. The style is named after the Yamato period, though no paintings survive from this point in time. Yamato A was also partially influenced by inkwash paintings from China, at the time of the Song and Yuan dynasties, though these ink paintings came to Japan in the 14th century and became sumi-e, more stylized ink paintings which mainly just use black ink with an emphasis on brushwork and the perceived spirit or essence of a subject, which is what it was focused on conveying compared to realism. And actually, Nintendo has used this style before in their games, paying homage to it in Yoshi's New Island a few times with level backdrops based on sumi-e paintings. But going back to Yamatoe, this style really formed the basis for Mario World's background style. Yamatoe has quite a few defining characteristics. For one, Yamatoe works usually include many small figures and careful depictions of details of buildings and other objects, with only a selection of some elements of a scene to be fully depicted, with the rest of the scene either being ignored or covered by a stylized cloud. The two other noticeable traits seen in these paintings is the oblique view from above, which portrays interiors of buildings as though through a cutaway roof, and of course the depiction of landscapes is very stylized. What we really want to focus on right now, though, is the clouds. There are two types of clouds seen in these works. The first one is now just referred to as wafunakumo, meaning Japanese-style cloud. These are seen throughout Mario games through the use of curly and puffy clouds, which, at least to me, resemble the cloud tiles that used in Mario World. The second type of cloud are these, called suyarigasumi, or yarigasumi meaning spear-like mist. But apart from being mist, this term is also used to refer to clouds of the same shape. Both of these cloud types are used in Yamatoe art to prevent the scene from becoming overcrowded with detail, creating blank spaces, almost like margins which can separate different scenes and locations, allowing for many to coexist on the same canvas and allow for the natural progression of a story, which aids in the telling of a narrative through the images. These clouds can also be stacked up on top of another in an image to give the illusion of height. Today, these clouds are also referred to as Japanese-style clouds or wafunakumo, just like the first ones. Along with the clouds, we are interested in the portrayal of landscapes in Yamatoe art. Looking at these byobu can help us with comparing Yamatoe to our modern games. Byobu are Japanese foldable screens, translated as wind wall. These screens were used to prevent harsh winds from blowing about in people's houses, as Japanese houses were traditionally very open air, almost to the point that when you opened all of the shoji doors, the inside would kinda cease to be a thing. Originally, these folding screens were only available to those in the highest rungs of Japanese society, but as time went on, their use proliferated as simpler ones were produced. And you can see just from looking at these landscapes how they have influenced the way in which Mario backgrounds and similar platform game environments look. At the same time, Yamatoe designs were also placed onto shoji and husuma doors, as well as paper walls, which is what Nintendo also decided to do in Hands-On Hall in Mario 3D World, a level that uses high-end period style architecture, note the green roof and red pillars, with Yamatoe style hills and clouds on the inner paper walls. And as I'm sure you'll remember from earlier on, Yamatoe came into full bloom in the late Heian period. Super Mario Odyssey even got in on the Byobu action, making a faithful reference to where the Mario franchise got a lot of its background imagery and stylization from. Yamatoe also influenced the more well-known ukiyo-e art movement, as can be seen with the same cloud shapes which are used in many of Katsushika Hokusai's works, including his most well-known series, 36 Views of Mount Fuji, which famously contains the Great Wave of Kanagawa. The Japanese-style clouds here have evolved to their more recognized stylized curly form here, but the spear-like mist is still also used in many ukiyo-e pieces. Altogether, Yamatoe, which began these stylistic choices, and perhaps even more so ukiyo-e, have had a large impact on Mario level backgrounds, with this being especially prominent in the Super Nintendo era with the All-Stars remakes and Mario World, where it started. The overworld levels in Mario World use these yarigasumi intertwined in the hills to give us the perception of high up hills, while in Mario 3 in All-Stars we have this scene which combines the vaguely soft looking triangular hills often seen in ukiyo-e along with these spear clouds. Shorter clouds reminiscent of the yarigasumi are also found in Donut Plain 
plains along with these same triangular hills inspired by Ukyo and Yamatoe. Of more interest though are the ghost house levels, which use the spear mist in a more traditional fashion to create a mysterious atmosphere and obscure parts of the stage. The older Yamatoe clouds may also have influenced Nintendo's newer Mario titles. When looking at the backgrounds as they appear in the game's files from the Super Nintendo Mario titles as well as their Game Boy Advance ports and the new Super Mario Bros. series, the way the background clouds are made to seamlessly loop reminds me of the older Yamato A clouds that would span the scenery of a Byobu. The other thing which shows the influence of Ukiyo-e on Mario art is the low horizon lines and subtle gradients used in Ukiyo-e, which is pretty visible in Hokusai's work, among others. If you look at the backgrounds used in Mario games, they all have very low horizon lines which often cannot be seen in-game, but are inferred through the placement of various layers of backgrounds and through the use of gradients like those seen in Ukiyo-e, which gives us a gradual transition which marks the low horizon. These elements have carried through to even the most modern Mario platformers, though what I find most interesting about these elements is their continued use from their introduction in Super Mario World to its sequel, Yoshi's Island. While the developers have gone on record saying they wanted to take a different approach to Yoshi's Island art style compared to the previous Mario titles, the interesting thing is how well these two styles line up and complement each other. While Super Mario World has its roots in Ukiyo-e and Yamato-e, Yoshi's Island takes a lot of cues and inspiration from the Impressionist and Post-Impressionist movements which start in Europe. Now, this is something that I covered long ago in one of the very first Culture Bits episodes, but that video is one that I want to redo soon, so in the meantime, all you need to know is this quick, very oversimplified timeline of art. Yamatoe influenced Ukiyo-e, which then came to the West through Dutch trade, and then soon became a part of a huge cultural craze, especially in France, for Japanese items and art in the late 19th and early 20th century called Japonism. This resulted in Ukiyo-e having a massive influence on the Impressionist and particularly post-Impressionist movements, with painters like Vincent van Gogh taking a huge liking to the art style, copying some Japanese prints and oil, and using the aforementioned stylization and low horizon lines in his own work. So in a way, this progression being present in Super Mario World and its sequel is very fitting. And of course, much like these artistic movements in real life, the influences have stuck around in modern Mario. These two cloud types are still used everywhere in Japan, and actually when I visited I remember seeing them in a lot of different places, even on maps, even if it annoyingly covered parts of the map. If you're interested in finding out more about Ukiyo-e, I've done a couple videos about it in the past which you may enjoy. All of the links will be in the description and at the end of this video. So. What do you make of all this? Do you prefer the style of Yamatoe or Ukiyo-e? Leave your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe for more culture bits. Oh, and also a small channel update. I've been live streaming a bit in between videos on my channel here on YouTube, though recently I suspect it's been messing with the reach of my videos and the last time I streamed I lost the most subs I've ever lost in one go, so from now on, if I stream at all, it will be over on my Twitch. There's a link in the description for anyone interested. Anyways, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.